Where are we today, Chris? Well, we're in Mount Abuta at Arches National Park on our way to Mesa Verde. But we had to stop here since it's on the way. And uh, we've never been here in the winter. It's December, there's a bit of snow. As you can see, it's beautiful. We're gonna go look around a bit before we continue on our way. So behind us here is South Window, and on the other side is Turret Arch. This is a very popular walk in the park because it's short. The parking lot's just over there, and it's also close to Double Arch, which you may or not may or may not be able to see, but it's in that area. So we're liking it. We're liking the winteriness of it all. This is unique. And the biggest benefit of coming here in winter is you skip a lot of the crowds. This place is one of the busiest parks in the country. It gets super backed up to where it takes like half an hour just to get in because there's a huge line. Yeah. There was zero line today. And that's because it's the week before Christmas. Here's Turret Arch up close. It's really photogenic with the snow. Delicate arch. Can you see it? It looks just like the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Expectations, reality. No. We've hiked to it. It is super cool. Yes. We're not up for that today. Because it's what, four miles round trip? Three point something. Yeah. It's, it's a long hike. Deer. Okay, we took a fairly ill advised detour into Canyons of the Ancients. Here we have arrived at Lowry Pueblo. I'm afraid we don't have much to show for it. It's kind of cool though. Um, wow, probably. It a better summer destination than winter. I feel like these look modern. I feel like this is like a reconstruction of the Pueblo. Yeah. Which you can like walk around and go through the doors and stuff, which is cool. But I want to see what's under here. Because I think that's the real stuff. Huh. Area closed beyond this point, it says. Since we're here, we should probably just take a peek, don't you think? Hey, Melissa, do you have your phone? Do you have your phone? You might need the light, yeah. It's scary in there. Here, you take my flashlight. I'll go around. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. This is actually cool. It's slightly terrifying. Wow. Okay. This. We're down looking at the walls of the original structure, I believe. It's gotta be, I, I, I don't have the history straight, but it's gotta be like 
over 2,000 years old. Uh, hopefully we'll learn more about the Pueblo culture in Mesa Verde and be able to tell you more. This is kind of a fun structure. And I feel like a Tomb Raider. Like Raiders of the Lost Ark. <clears throat> wow. The issue is, before this, we tried to go to Painted Hands Pueblo. We drove like 12 miles down this gravel road. And, uh, wanted to find that, like, the trail that's marked on Google Maps to get to the Pueblo. Uh, has signs on both ends saying like this is a private road, no legal access beyond this point. You just can't get to it unless you trespass. Oh, after what felt like hours driving through the dark and the snow, we've made it to our destination, Cortez, Colorado, and we've got some Mexican food. Oops. Sorry. No, it's okay. Gracias. Thank you. It's beautiful. It has a little Mexican flag. Oh, I should put that back in there so you can <laughs> see okay. it. Uh, it's only like seven at night, but it feels so late. <laughs> it's been a long day. Okay, it is day two of our wintry road trip. And where are we today, Melissa? Faraday National Park. Yeah, the uh, the main event of our trip is cold and windy. We just drove up the Mesa. We haven't seen anything much yet other than this view. We're excited to see some of these ancient cliff dwellings and other uh, ruins of these ancestral Puebloan people. So let's get to it. After doing a nice drive, we came to our first adobe structure, the Farview House. Over there is the Pipe Shrine House. And of course, structures like these are what this park is all about. Uh, this national park is unique from all the others because its specific purpose is for preserving the works of men. And it's quite impressive, really. I don't know, for me, the most impressive thing is that people survived here. Obviously, it's, it seems pretty inhospitable right now in the winter. But man, if you come to this region in the summer, it is brutal. We like it. We like coming and exploring, but like, we're in our air-conditioned cars. And we get out for a few minutes and just get zapped by the sun and get dehydrated. You know, the air is so dry, it just takes it out of you. People are hospitalized all the time because they go hiking and don't know what they're up against. So it really speaks to the mental fortitude and ingenuity of the people who found a way to flourish in this environment. Wow. Here is a close-up view of the Pipe Shrine House. When they found this and excavated it, apparently they found a good number of ceremonial pipes. And you cannot really get into it, but it looks like there's a big ring pit in the middle. Check it out, there's like an engraved swirl on that stone. Here is the far view tower and a couple of kivas. So these might be like what they lived in. If you go to Edge of the Steezers State Park in Blanding, Utah, they have a cool recreation of a kiva where you can climb down the hole in the top, down a ladder inside. It's kind of fun. Sorry I can't talk, it's really cold. <laughs> there we go. There you go. 
big handsome fella. He doesn't like me one bit. can get a move on when he wants to. On the other side of the canyon here behind me is the Spruce Tree House. One of the most substantial cliff dwellings in the park. One of the main attractions. We have a pretty nice clear view of it. But unfortunately, after this point, the trail closes. It's closed down in the winter because of the danger of rock fall, but normally you could go all the way down, right up next to it, which would be Mighty fine. Just another reason to come back during the summer. The biggest thing we're missing out on, I think, is the guided tours, where they take you in through some of these cool dwellings here and at Balcony House, and there's other guided tours available. So there's plenty of reasons to keep coming back. There's also here at Spruce Tree area, a sweet looking museum, pretty big, and uh, I bet that would be full of cool artifacts. The only thing open right now is the restaurant and gift shop. So we got our magnet for our fridge at home, if that's important. Anyway, what would you say, Melissa? Is it worth coming during the winter? I think so, but I really want to come so that I can be next to him. Yeah. I just can't during the winter. It is cool. It's a cool, unique view to have the snow but it's not the full experience. What'd you find? I found a pit. It's a pit house. <laughs> it's in a nice enclosed structure to keep it from weathering away, I suppose. Cool. Ah, I see. So this is where they would enter. They put the little ladder. Mm. And this is where they lived. Okay, it looks nothing like that now. <laughs> Must have had a top to it. Yes. It's obviously not as impressive of architecture as those cliff palaces. But this was the early Puebloans around like 600 AD. That's what the sign here said, I think. 600 AD, right, Melissa? You're right. Their heyday was from like 600 to about 1200. About 600 years. With their success as agriculturalists, growing corn, beans, squash, their population boomed to about 8,000. And then slowly dropped off. I suppose they say the rain is no longer as favorable. And those impressive cliff dwellings you see were built around 1200 AD when there was only like 1500 people left. And then for whatever reason, they were completely abandoned 100, within 100 years of being built. So a bit of a mystery. Some suppose they were chased out by neighboring tribes that weren't so friendly. Or maybe they were just wanting to live in a less hot desert. Who knows? Okay, so here we have a five room village. Built around the year 850. Here we have one built about a hundred years later. So you can see they're getting deeper, more complex over time. Let me teach you here something, Sonny. That there's a turkey. I needed to take that arrow and shoot it. Oh, Green Daddy, I don't wanna. Look how deep it is. My gosh. Right? That is big. All right, let's see what we have here. Wow. Oh, you can see dwelling. Watch your step. Oh, cool. I think that's Cliff Place. Cliff Palace? Cliff Palace, yes. Yeah, I'm 
sure it's not much as far as the footage goes, but it sure looks sweet. Wow. My gosh. My gosh. Whoa. Hey, there's other people over there too. Yeah. Lots to see here at some point. Like five or so different complexes of these buildings and the cliffs. Very cool. And I gotta say, I'm loving having this place to ourselves. We are running into so few people. It would probably go much slower if there's like tons of cars congesting these one-way roads. Oh my gracious. Look at it's taller than me. Yeah, because here's the Sun Temple, and it's a pretty big building. I suppose we're just walking a circle all the way around it. Yeah, look at how huge that is. Impressive. Melissa, how many people do you think lived in this? 50 people. Maybe more. 50 people? I see, I see that being possible. What? We can go right there? Oh, heck yeah. yeah. There's a walkway into the middle of it. Nope, that was misleading. Alright. Wow. Yeah, look how extensive these are. Cool. There's Cliff Palace. Ancients National <laughs> Monument. We're trying to make up for last night by coming to the Escalante Pueblo. Of course they have a epic, pretty epic museum right here. And uh, that's closed. Because you know winter is not their specialty around here. Alright, here we go. Half a mile to the Pueblo. Can we make it? Yeah. It's quite cold. It's uh, in the 20s and it's very windy. But we got this. Wowzers. We have arrived at our destination, the Escalante Pueblo. Okay, looks like this is also a pit structure like we saw in Mesa Verde. Only we had to work hard to get to this one. Let's see if we can see anything besides just the top of a wall. Here we go. Here's the prime view of Escalante Pueblo. Yeah, that'll do it for me. <laughs> anyway, this concludes our quest of exploring the ruins of the ancient Native Americans who came before us. If you've been to Mesa Verde and been on some of the tours, tell us which one is your favorite. And we'll catch you at the Great Sand Dunes because we're crazy and we like the pain of cold temperatures. 